Hey guys, Jordan, Slickback Sunday. And today we have the recently released Chaotic Clay. This is a collaboration by a handful of brewers in association with the movement from Everything Pomade over to Pomade Everything. If you haven't gone over to Pomade Everything, that is the place to be to kind of see what's happening within the pomade market, talk to brewers, talk to other hair enthusiasts, and kind of see what's going on within the market. Anyways, let's kind of jump into what this product is all about. If you don't know, it essentially was created by multiple brewers. We have Chaotic, the hair channel over on Instagram, kind of came up with the concept and overall design of the product. From there, a formulation was created from Tony at White Label Grooming. It was then passed on to Chris Young over at Prodigal Pomade to come up with the scent. Brad from over at Cub & Co then created a design for the jar. And finally, Wade from Flagship took everything that was given to him and finally created and distributed this product. And we're gonna take a look at the packaging. So the Chaotic Clay is held in our standard amber jar, black lid on top, and we have stickers on the top and the side. Looking at the top sticker, we get just a classic kind of heavy metal style font that brings me back to my teenage years of playing guitar, playing bands, and just being an all-around rebel. And I think that's what this product kind of stands for. We have the list of the brewers involved with the product, and this is a brewing collaboration by Pomade Everything. Moving then to the side, we get some directions. Essentially, the directions tell you to just essentially use it however you want. You can use it as a pre-styler, you can use it as a post-styler, you can use the whole jar if you really want to. That's kind of up to your discretion. Front label, very similar to the top. Like it, the silver really reflects nice on the black background. However, I might have used something besides an amber jar just to hold everything together, keep everything black and silver. Moving to the ingredients, this is a very, um, it's rice bran wax heavy, and besides that, the ingredients are, as expected, quality from home brewers. Opening up the jar, we get this beautiful scent that was kind of crafted by Chris over at Prodigal Comet. It is extremely sandalwood heavy, complex, and just essentially re really refreshing. My understanding is that it is made off of a Creed scent, also known as Santel, I believe. Um, I have not smelled that, but if it's half as good as this, I'd be pretty damn happy. The only side effect is that this can be a little pungent. If you start to add two, three scoops, this is something that will linger throughout the day. So just be wary. If you are gonna wear some sort of clone, you want it to either match or don't wear cologne at all while using this product. But let's take a look at the scoop. Now, as I said, this is a kind of a mixed bag product, but I would label it as kind of a waxy, heavy clay. Scooping it out takes some pressure and it, I do recommend getting through the top layer not to have um, any issues with clumping or anything like that. The scoop is thick, it's heavy, and as we break it down, the taxi, tackiness starts to fully envelop our finger. Breaking it down into the hand, this product instantly creates some tackiness as you start to really break it down. So be wary if you do have thicker hair types, as you may get quite a drastic experience. So less scooping, less breaking down, should apply a little bit easier. I think that's always my motto for hair products. Anyways, let's apply it into the hair. The tackiness comes right fully through, right with the first scoop. I can feel it pulling the hair in whatever direction I need it to. But overall, pretty standard for this type of product. First scoop, everything's pretty good. Starting to get 
a little bit of waxiness noticeable. And when I do say waxiness, I generally mean a slightly increase in shine generally and the texture moves towards a more fine profile. Fine being strand-like hairs versus coarse where you get different clumping of the hair. Second scoop, this is probably all I would recommend using. And we're starting to get some great coverage. Everything applied pretty easily and the waxiness of the product continues to envelop our hair, which can be good and bad. It provides a very chaotic type of texture, which I think is definitely part of what goes into a wax. Now, I would prefer that the texture profile of this was not quite as waxy, and it's hard to call this a true clay product because of how waxy it is. A little bit on the sides, just tame everything down, add a little bit more texture, and fine tune everything. And then we'll go into the details on how it applied and everything like that. So, before we get into that, here's your final look at what it does. So the initial application was quite tacky, especially once we got that second scoop in. However, I was easily able to distribute it throughout my hair and not have to worry about areas clumping or anything like that. So without that, with that out of the way, let's talk about the performance of this product. Now, this is labeled as a firm hold, but I would honestly just call this a medium. I don't get anywhere close to what I would call a firm hold, especially as the day goes by. Right now, it holds a shape and everything is in place, but a little bit of a gust of wind may change what we're getting out of this product. From there, again, the texture is, I would say, on the waxy spectrum. However, it does have a touch of dryness to it too, Kind of allow it all together and maintain itself. The structure of the pomade is decent. I think the control of this product could use a little bit of work. I find the product may be a little bit too heavy to be as responsive as I personally would like with a hair product. From there, I would say that we do get a slight sheen from the product. Not 100% matte, but it's not too bad. Looks pretty good. So with that covered, we're kind of going to come back in a little bit. My day isn't too exciting, but the temperature outside is pretty hot for here in Canada. So we'll see how this works out and we'll come check out later. So it's been a couple hours so far. It's about 26, 27 degrees. Not sure what that is in uh, your American units, but it's a nice day out and chaotic clay so far is holding up there isn't too much of a breeze or anything like that so it isn't being tested a whole lot so we'll see what it's like in a couple more hours chaotic clay after five hours in the hair here's the final result so after having this in my hair for a little bit let's kind of go over what happened during the time period while we were away now I will uh, start by saying that my day was pretty relaxed. There was a bunch of just chilling at home, not doing a whole bunch. And then I went outside for about a 20 minute walk. Um, no heavy sweating or anything like that. So I didn't push this product to the edge of where I might try other products. Now let's see what it did. What I would say is this product lost a little bit of its sheen that we originally saw. From there, we also lost a little bit of the overall texture that we are sawing. Being a waxy product, it was originally pretty chaotic and hard to kind of tame, and that's what we expect from a wax. But with a little bit of deflation and stuff, we lost that aspect. From there, I would say the original hold 
being more of a center of the road medium did dissipate a little bit, but it is still present in the hair. The hair feels soft and is still malleable and movable to work with. And that's a great aspect. However, I will say pushing this product even further, if I would have done a workout or been outside a little bit longer, I think that this product does have some issues with the high heat that we're seeing. And that might be the issue. And this potentially could work so much better when we get back to a more stable, more reliable temperature. Besides that, moving on to the washout, I think the washout is very clean, it's gentle, and it's easy to get out of your hair. A slight cleansing shampoo will get all of this out of your hair. From there, I would say that um, this product I would compare to something like O'Dowd's Dry Wax, or even something closer to like uh, Lockhart's Transcend product. I find that this product is quite waxy and I don't think I would personally identify it as a strictly clay product. And that might be the issue that they're having with trying to identify it as a paste versus a clay, but all in the end, it's just semantics. Comparing it again to those products, I would say that this has a little bit less hold, a little bit less endurance, and just isn't as powerful as we see with either O'Dowd's Dry Wax or transcend by the Lockharts. If I were to uh, kind of adjust anything on this product, I would say that the whole or the scoop of this product is almost kind of unacceptable for what we're seeing on the market these days. Um, if this was a better product, had an extreme hold and really justified that hard scoop, I think we could go with it. However, the product just doesn't perform the way that I think it is labeled and can't justify having some aspects that aren't pleasing to use. Now, people will get mad at me and say that, okay, products don't need to be easy to use, but if they don't perform very well, they should probably be easy to use. Uh, aside from that, I do love the scent on this stuff. Even though it is a little strong, the application was pretty easy. And once you get down that, down, the first top layer, it does start to break down normally. However, be wary of that top layer, especially in these first batches that we're seeing. Anyways, as I would say, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it helped you decide whether you think this product is right for you or not. Subscribe if you can, like, smash all those buttons below, and leave a comment for anything that you're interested in. Anyways, thanks again. I'll see you guys later.